Good morning, everyone. We are in December 2020, and that was my head exploding. Boom. All right, let's get into it this morning. We've actually got some action in the markets, uh, but before I, before Brian and I jump over and get into the action, let me do this very quickly. Uh, and I do want to state that trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for everyone. And that any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility and are done at your own risk. And that this is an educational session. Please do not construe anything Brian or I say as a buy or sell recommendation. We are doing this for your education purposes. So um, there are, I know there's a, a lot to talk about. We're only going to pick a, a couple of hot spots sure. just to kind of give people some help identifying opportunities or potential opportunities in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start off first. Do, let's do a quick recap on the on the pound yen. Like yeah, we, so we've been talking about this um, really the last uh, week or so, um, just about how important Brexit is and how much this thing uh, could really just the, the pound in general could move. Uh, one thing that we we're looking at yesterday was um, really kind of getting a a pop in price, and we were looking, you know, basically absent any type of Brexit official release or anything, looking for smaller levels for you know turnarounds. Uh, one of the levels we mentioned yesterday was this 139.74 area, being an area where we had basing up top and then a strong movement off of that, and we were looking for potential shorts. Well, it took basically the entire day, and I've mentioned this a few times, but the UK Open is one of the best times to trade any of the European currency pairs. Here was the European Open. It tagged the exact level that we talked about, the 139.74. You can see this black line up here. This was is actually one of the knockout ceilings. Um, and you guys are able to see that we had a nice rollover again, not using a crystal ball, looking to see where confirmations are, right? Seller stepped in, drove price down very sharply. Price came back up, hit that same exact supply zone. And then again, drove all the way through to the one to five and ended up bouncing up to 139.01. Okay. Uh, why is that important? Again, that is the last time we had strong movements to the top side. So today we could be using the 139.74 and the 139 really double zero is what we'd be looking for as far as tops and bottoms. But it's always nice to follow up from the prior day. Again, a, a knockout bracket coming in, only having about 10 to $12 worth of risk in there when we were kind of at its peak right here uh, for a push of, I believe it's almost 70 pips to the downside. Uh, yeah, set 79 pips to the downside. So 10 risk for about 79 worth of movement. It, it's a nice mover for a knockout. So that's kind of what we talked about yesterday as uh, one of the potential turnarounds in the pound. Um, all right. Today, yeah, no next. news out of the pound. So, uh, again, probably going to be more of a technical based trade. Um, again, relying on the yen. Uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I just like people to be able to see and follow along uh, after, you know, it was mm -hmm. yesterday that we were kind of talking about it. So it was, it's, it's just interesting to follow up a day later. Today, I think one of the big stories this morning, uh, just in terms of the, what's moving in the market, uh, the metals have been getting hammered, silver and gold. And it appears they have found a bottom. Uh, I know gold is up a bit. Silver is up mm -hmm. significantly more, uh, yep. particularly from a, uh, a percentage move. Let's 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 focus in on what's going on in silver. Yeah, sure. So let me remove a couple of these because we there are also move them over. Uh, so we've been talking for a while that twenty two between twenty two and twenty one eighty nine was uh, an area that we we're looking for a potential reversal. Again, silver had been pushed all the way down, and eventually buyers will step in. It'll become so on sale that someone has to get it. Uh, what we did is we saw that yesterday, and, and during the presentation, I even mentioned that we're getting a little bit of basing. That may actually be, and, and again, you can see. Uh, let me do a kind of a history piece here. Um, there we go. You can see we actually drew this yesterday saying, hey, this could be the bounce, but we'd be looking for some type of a confirmation, a pull away from the area and a pull back. And that's exactly what you can see happen. We pulled up, we pulled back again, touched the level and then took off. And then I, I mentioned this kind of small level here. And I said, you know, what happens with this level will really depend on what we see. Okay. What I mentioned is if we see basing in that level going sideways, we could be looking for a break higher. Okay. And it did, it broke higher, did the same confirmation entry, a pull away, a pull back, and then a push higher. Where we are now is a very interesting position. Okay, let me stretch this out a little bit. So we've seen sellers kind of step in here in the past, right? We saw some basing. We saw a push down and kind of a base here, a base here, another little base here. All of these were front run approximately at the 2350 level. Now we can see we kind of have pushed up and we, we pulled back and now we're riding through, but on the upper regions of that, with all this movement, 
and again, this is a one hour chart. All this movement has happened in the overnight. I'd be looking for some type of reversal. And why this is important is at 10 o'clock today, uh, let me actually drag this in real quick. At 10 o'clock today, Fed, Powell, or Fed Chair Powell was speaking at 10 a.m. Yep. He has the power to kind of really change things around, things like inflation, interest rates, all that is extremely important, as well as the ISM manufacturing at PMI. So these are two um, you know, market moving economic releases and events that can be very big movers. And again, knowing that we've pushed up so, so fast, and again, now we've actually broken through that level here which puts us on, you know, right in the sights of the, the 24 flat. And again, double zeros, psychological level coming back Definitely. up much higher on the curve. So let's go ahead. I'm going to jump over to the Nadex platform. Uh, let's just do a quick switch here. And I want to see, uh, I want to show people how you could potentially play this. And I've got the levels drawn in. Right now we are on the knockouts. All right, we're on Nadex knockouts looking here. It's, it's silver. And uh, yeah, yesterday we were seeing this this basing in silver down around that 22 level, mm -hmm. and look at that. I mean, overnight it just took off. Now mm -hmm. you you had this level, this 23 and a half ish level, yep. where it you know it started to you know slow down just a bit, and then here we are, and it's continuing straight through it. So I think you know at, at the way things are going, there might be this opportunity as it gets up closer to this 24. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking for a reversal later this morning, uh, there might be some opportunities. Uh, it, it, there, here's a knock. I mean, there's some knockouts in here that you could take a look at. Again, uh, whenever you trade a knockout, you've got to find risk to find reward. Um, and if it, you know, if it touches your level, you get knocked out. You, you know, you can't, you can't lose or win any more uh, than you know when you're going into the trade. Another way to potentially uh, look at these wouldn't be in the knockouts if you didn't want to get knocked out, but you wanted to play a directional play. Uh, let's jump over to the call spreads in silver. And I'll look at the uh, the daily silver and let's just grab one of these. And, and here, let's get this out of the way so we can see it too. Uh, here you can see we've got some call spreads and those are in the shaded regions. Uh, you know, it's you know, depending upon how you wanted to uh, potentially play silver, um, you know, it, it, it is, uh, there, there's some choices to be made uh, if, if you were looking for a rollover. Again, all defined risk, defined reward, but at a certain level, if you thought it was going to do a, a reverse, there might be, uh, there might be some opportunities there in silver. All right. Um, I want to keep moving along because uh, there's just so much to talk about. I think yeah, the if other. I, you know, if I can add in one last thing about that real yes, fast. Um, just please. a headline that I found a little while ago. Um, again, they're talking about this is an article written in Bloomberg, actually in Canada, I believe. And it's talking about the supercharged economy, uh, talking about the S&P was up big. Uh, one of the things that we mentioned yesterday about gold and silver in particular is it is a hedge for inflation. People hear stimulus. It comes. Well, there was an article today. I recommend you guys go out there and check it out. Um, it talks about how. Um, there may be, you know, the, the, the U.S. market is surging. The S&P was up 11 percent. There may many are questioning whether equities have become dis disconnected to reality as the COVID-19 pandemic rages anew. Lost in the debate, and this is where it gets interesting, is the potential for an explosive economy in 2021, given the magnitude of excess savings that households have accumulated, is some probably totaling $1.4 trillion. Even the Federal Reserve is starting to realize just how beneficial this pot of money will be for the economy going forward. At the November Federal Open Market Committee meeting, Fed staff no longer assumed that another round of fiscal stimulus mm. is coming. That is absolutely huge. A statement that, uh, again, if it is true, um, again, if there is no stimulus coming, that's going to kind of put us in an interesting situation because stimulus is what was associated with a boom in inflation, which yeah. is what supposedly going to take, you know, silver to, you know, 100 and, and gold and up into gold. the, you know, four or 5,000 range. So it's very interesting. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see. Well, apparently the Fed sounds like uh, to drive and to stimulate the inflation that they're looking for, they're expecting the U.S. consumer. Because we have, because we're we're big savers. Because we're we're all just flush <laughs> with cash. Yeah, we are. We're just we're just socking it away. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we'll see how that works out. Mm -hmm. um, let's keep things moving along. I, I do. Um, uh, I think we'll finish up just taking a quick peek at the equity markets before the open, but let's let's just jump into oil real quick yep. because that's also been um, 
an interesting story lately. Yeah, it's one we mentioned yesterday as well. Uh, so oil yesterday, guys, we were sitting, let's see, right here. We were sitting right, right in this level. Okay, we talked about price being there, and we expected a little bit of a burst through. Now, this is a very, very easy trap. Uh, anybody that's a support and resistance trader would be like, oh, if we break this, we're going higher. Yeah, we were looking for a higher push, but you can see how that popped up. Again, we were looking to get shorts because we were in the upper third of the curve. And what happened the second it peaked this head above? All those buyers said, yep, it broke it. I'm going long. And what happened? Bam, they got slammed back down again. And again, this is why you know we mentioned with Nadex, if price does go higher, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It'll take a lot of people out, right? But it doesn't take you out of a Nadex binary or call spread. Knockouts are a little bit different, and that's why we're looking for higher on the extreme. So Price never made it up to 46 or down to 46, uh, 44.6. Uh, but we did get the pop and we drove all the way back down to that level. Did not break it, came back up, grabbed the same level we talked about yesterday, came back down, grabbed it a third time this morning and is now pushed lower. So right now I kind of have alerts on my radar. I want to know when we get back up into that kind of 45, 60 ish area, as well as if we get down to 46, 60, or if we can maybe push up to 46. But either of these three are big hot, hot buttons for me right now. And you can see from yesterday's you know level here, one trap for retail traders, three good shorts, and again, right now we're looking for entry high or low inside of this, you know, this thirty percent curve. Awesome. Let me uh, jump over to the Nadex platform then. Again, and let's just take a quick look at that. And and here I've I've got us on the call spreads. Uh, you know, unlike the knockouts where if you hit one of the boundaries, you're out. Call spreads, you can go through your boundary, but it's a way for people to to pick a direction um, on a commodity or uh, I mean, we've got call spreads. Um, on indices and, and, and forex as well, but here in, in in crude oil, where you can you can pick a direction. You know that your risk is defined re, uh, risk defined reward. It's always calculated. But the thing is, is you don't have to wait. You do not have to wait until the end to see what happens. Uh, you know, if you wanted to take a directional play, we do see that you know oil has been uh, it's found its support down here around that forty four sixty ish level, uh, and it has. Uh, it's seen that resistance around that 45, 60 ish level. Uh, and then, you know, we're, we're, we're clearly, we're selling off here a little bit this morning. Um, mm -hmm. if it were to rally back up that, that 46 number above, uh, definitely becomes a psychological number just cause it's the double zero, which we've always mentioned. It, 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 it can definitely come into play. Uh, the other way to, to play these, uh, and I, I do like to, want to make sure, I mean, this is our most popular product is our binary options. I mean, these are $100 contracts, defined risk, defined reward. Let me jump over to crude oil and I'm just going to look at a daily. And we're, we're here we are right around 45. Let's move this out of the way. Uh, there you can see those ranges. Let's zoom in just here on how we're seeing it being range bound. Um, and, and you see there are, you know, several knockout I mean, I'm sorry, there are several binary contracts that are right in this range. And as as oil moves up and down, and let's move it over, as oil moves up and down, these probabilities, uh, you know, can only go to a zero or a hundred. Here we are, it's at a 50-50 because we're right here at the, at the, at the strike uh, roughly. You know, these probabilities move in again, just because there's an expiration, which is in five hours associated with these contracts, does not mean you have to wait to see, does it go to zero or does it go to a hundred? Uh, you can trade these. Uh, and if it goes your way, you can get out early and take a partial profit or cut your losses, take a partial loss if it's going against you. But if it's going to be, if, if you think it's going to stay range bound, there are some contracts in here in the binaries, the daily binaries that could be interesting as we see what oil does throughout the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we, I mean, I know we're up at the end here. Uh, I thought we maybe can you would want to fast. Just yeah, this is kind of cover a little bit. Let me flip you over uh, to just a little bit on the equity, yep. just because the uh, sure. cash equities are about to open. Yeah, I mean, basically, we're in the same situation for all the equities. I think whatever Powell says today is going to be pretty important. Um, again, with everything going on, the markets, I saw an interesting meme yesterday. It was uh, a news release that said aliens are coming. And then it was two pictures in the first one said the market is, oh, really? OK, never mind. And they just continue to push higher. So the, the, the markets are just on up basically is it they just they're, they're on the upsetting and again we're pushing higher but right now at least on kind of small intraday basis you can see right now that the dow just bounced off a 30 minute level it's one that we've mentioned multiple times right now this 29986 again match it to yours the top of the the, the bottom of the green body and again we've touched it twice this is a, another time through 
Looks like it could have a potential rollover, but be very, very cautious. We have this one level coming in right down here uh, at approximately 29,862, where if price pulls back, you know, that's a pretty nice pop. If that comes down here at 10 o'clock, pal, could uh, obviously uh, move that one. Awesome. S&P, same idea up top. NQ, same thing at the, ex ex you know, extreme ranges. So, you know, Pal has the ability to blow through any of these and punch us higher. Uh, but if I'll tell you right now, if he mentions uh, we're not going to do any more stimulus because the economy is great, I think the uh, the market's going to be a little bit upset about that. So, All right. Let's, um, I know we've gone a little long today. I want to give people a chance to uh, take a break before the uh, cash equities uh, open. Uh, if you've got any questions for Nadex, please email us, customer service at nadex.com. We are here to help. Any questions you've got about the exchange, our markets, our products, how they work, your account, please follow us on social media. Uh, as you're watching this on YouTube right now, I would recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can hit and set reminders. Uh, we set these sessions out about a week. I think that's as far as uh, YouTube will let us go, but you'll get a reminder that we're doing this every morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central. If you got any questions for Brian, support at keeptradingsimple.com. He is available. If you have any questions for him, please email Brian. Uh, with that, we want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, here we are. It's, it's December. Let's get at it. Uh, and I think we're going to see an interesting day in the markets. We'll catch you tomorrow morning. Uh, and oh, you know, and today is we'll catch you in a few hours. We're going to catch you in a few hours. If you like this little taste of what we're doing, Brian does a deep dive once a week, every Tuesday, uh, midday. So, uh, you can go over to the, uh, Nadex website, look on our webinars section and you can register for that webinar. We record that and post it up on YouTube as well, but yeah, we, uh, please join us then. And with that, we want to wish you all good luck in the markets. Thanks everyone.